welcome back to another video. Uh, I just remembered I'm a vlogger and I'm supposed to vlog every day. So this is me leaving home, going to meet another YouTuber called Maltudella. He used to be called Natural Ghana Girl. I'm having a meeting with her at ANC. Come with me. Let's go. Anyways, if it's your first time here, my name is Hayford. I do have a main page called Web Nation the Africa where I do interviews and podcasts there. Go check me out. Link in the description um, as well. Alright, peace. See who is here. It's me. It's me. <laughs> tell, tell, tell your people to go subscribe to my vlogging channel. Come on now, subscribe. What's, what's, what's the delay? You need to subscribe quickly. <laughs> you heard from her. Go check me out. She, she's telling me all her secret, guys. No secrets. No secrets. <laughs> so I'm here with uh, Maltidella. Maltidella, yes. We just had a really great conversation. That was wasted content, though, because I think you should have recorded it. I know. Why don't you let people see this side of you that, like, I see? I think you should be more. Don't you guys? Tell him in the comment section. Don't you think he should be more open about who he is, like the real Hayford? I think you should. I'm trying, you know. No, you yeah, should. I like your advice, the way you're coaching me on it. We literally had several conversations. One of them is planning for mm -hmm. Influencer Fest. Yeah. Uh, which happened last year. Yeah. You know, great individual diaspora coming through, yeah. content creators from the US, mm -hmm. UK. Also, Ghanaians, top on the food chain, came through to, you know, share advice yeah. or whatnot. Yeah. It's happening again this year, hopefully. It's so good. Yeah. So, we are planning on it, you know, what, now, what we can do together. Yeah. So be on the lookout for it. And several other things we spoke about. I know. We spoke about some great stuff. Like, I feel so motivated. I like meetings like this where when you finish, you feel so motivated. You feel charged and you're ready to do some stuff. So you, you guys are going to see some great stuff happening. Really, I'm gonna, really yeah, great stuff. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to vlog more, tell you guys more about myself. You know, I'm very shy. So this one is shy. This one is shy, yeah? <laughs> uh, but I'll try, I'll try. So, try. Uh -huh. I want to ask you a few things. You moved, you've been here for a long time, mm -hmm. like moving to Ghana and everything. Yeah. How has it been I mean, so far? How many years now? 10 years, I'm at 10, 10 years. I, I should have done like some type of celebration. I feel like 10 years is such a milestone. 10 years anniversary living in Ghana. Yeah, I should have done that, you know? I think that you should do it, I'll come. Really? I don't like doing events. I feel like no one will turn up. Really? No, you have to, you have to remember. Really? Manifest it. I uh, know, I have to manifest it, it's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, mean, yeah. I think, yeah, maybe that's something I'll look into. But yeah, I mean, being in Ghana has been, for 10 years, has been very up and down. I've seen so many changes. Ghana's come a long way. Although I think some people come into the system and feel like, Ghana doesn't have a lot of this or that. It has changed so much to the point where literally you come here, you can do anything. You can do any business that you want to do. You can come here and do it. Bring your ideas from the West. Like you can implement so many things. You can be like the best version of yourself. And I think that's what I love about Ghana. I just, I'm, Ghana's wonderful. It's not, it's not all rosy though. Let me not lie to you. It's not, all, not everything is rosy. There are hard times, trust me. I've had some very, very difficult times here. But if you can push through that, make it. Seriously, Ghana's, you need to be here. Now I had, I mean, so many people came and they left. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've had several people I know who had to go back to the US, either to work for a few months, mm. um, to come back, you know, to yeah. kind of, I know more people like that. What did you do different that, you know, you know, kept you grounded and you don't have to, you mm. didn't have to go back to the UK or whatever. You, you had like, savings no you brought like hundred thousand pounds which hey means. i don't even have 100 cities right now what do you mean <laughs> no you know what it was i didn't have a plan b mm. so for me i had to just make it work i just it, the, i didn't give myself the option to say um if this doesn't work i'm gonna go back to the uk no 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 i wanted this to be what it was and so I just stuck with that and so it enabled me to push through even though I was having bad days. Mm -hmm. I have bad had bad days in the UK too. But for me I made this home and that's what I stuck with and so I wasn't gonna look at anything else. I think once you put in your mind that oh if this doesn't work out I'm gonna do this you always fall back on your plan B and your plan C and your D and you'll keep going. Mm -hmm. But if this is what your main goal is you won't this will be it. I love it and you've done so many amazing things. She recently guys released a book yeah. About your relationship, yeah. I did. 
<laughs> my 18 years, oh gosh. Yeah. Tell us about it. Okay, so the book basically talks about my journey from getting married to moving to Ghana to up to the breakdown. The book, I always say, it is a very honest book. I've said things in there that I've never said out loud to people before. I just wanted to help people who are in a similar situation to me so that you don't feel that when you come out of a long-term relationship like you don't know what your next step is you don't know who you are anymore so i talk about a lot of those things i've made myself very vulnerable i've talked about some very taboo stuff um, some of the stuff i won't even tell you it I mean, yeah, it'll blow you away like you'd have to read the book but i have been very honest because i have a genuine heart for people and i want people to be free of certain things there are a lot of stereotypes especially here in ghana you know, if you end a marriage and you're the one who did it, you know, you almost you're deemed a failure and you kind of go through this emotional roller coaster where you feel broken, you feel worthless almost. And I don't want people to feel like that. So I wanted to put it all in a book and talk about it. And that's kind of how I started my journey into the relationship wellness space as well, because even though I say I'm a relationship coach, mm -hmm. I want to more help people who have been on a similar journey to me or who are going through that journey or who perhaps want to um, head into a relationship, but you want to be whole because I realized there's so many things that I missed in my own relationship. I shouldn't have got married when I did. Mm. And I talk about that in the book as well. And so all these things now I want to use for the education and to help other people so they don't go through what I went through. I lost 18 years. That's a long time. People go to prison for less than that, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I like how you compare that to prison. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, because if I'm honest with you, there were some things that I suffered. Yeah. I suffered in my relationship. I did suffer a lot of emotional abuse as well, which I talk about mm -hmm. in the book. Mm -hmm. But some things you'll never know until a person says. And I think that the more people share and talk about these things that are taboo, mm -hmm. the, the, the better it gets and the easier it gets for other people to come out and talk about that too. And I've already had people reach me and say, I have been through that exact same thing, mm -hmm. but I wasn't able to talk about it. So, that's so what it's like by them reading your book, it makes them feel like they can now be vocal about their experiences. Absolutely, and it gives you, it gives you. Um, like the hope that there's more afterwards right because that doesn't define you your past doesn't define you it's very much about what you can do next so i want to help people in what comes next after that rediscover who you are because you were someone before you got married now you need to continue that journey it's not it's not just about the marriage the failed marriage that you have it's more than that you are more than that and that's what it's about i like that that's very powerful and you're a very strong woman you know um People Honestly, say that and I'm like, yeah. am I? <laughs> I think so. I think so. Because I've seen you do so many things very consistent with your YouTube channel, mm. creating content. You have two YouTube channels. Yeah. One where you do like, you know, normal interviews, whatnot. Mm. One where you're blogging around and you're yeah. very consistent at it. Yeah. Not only that, you have your own skincare products. I do. Your own brand. That you... Tell me about it though. You know, you know how Fafa Badella was born? Mm -hmm. It was born from poverty. <laughs> from poverty. <laughs> and that's the truth. It was. It was born from poverty. So when I came to Ghana, right, I didn't have money to go to the supermarket and buy creams. Mm -hmm. And so I, and you couldn't put shea butter directly onto your skin. It's too thick. So then I started experimenting with making my own creams. And I sometimes would do it on camera as I vlog. People were like, what is that you're doing? And then I would let people try it. And then I was like, so then when I went through my breakup, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do this thing. I want people to feel good. So then it became like a self-care thing. And it became about fragrance and smelling nice. And so all my creams smelled really nice. And so I thought, you know what, why don't I just, I'm doing it already. Why don't I just put this out there, sell it, and have this brand that actually talks about my story. So it's all kind of interlinked. So Fafa by Della is again about my brand and my journey where I've come through from the heartbreak and all of that. So it's about making you feel good about who you are and no matter what space you're in. You know, if you're going through a terrible time, spray yourself, feel good in that moment. Cream yourself, feel good, you know? That's what it's all about. The, the, I think what I'm taking away with this is it started with poverty. It started with poverty. <laughs> I'll probably use that for my title. <laughs> yeah, it started with poverty. So a lot of the things that have happened to me, a lot of the business ideas I've even had have come from a place of poverty. Mm. You know, my blogs I had, I had a blog I talk about in the book, mm -hmm. I had I sold for quite a bit of money, came from a place of poverty as mm. well. I didn't have money in Ghana. I was like looking for things I can do. What can I do to make money? I did it, I made some money sold it. it was from poverty you get the most ideas yeah. when you are in a very tight spot yeah and i wasn't going back where to you have no choice to like 
You have no plan B. There's no plan B. So it's literally make or break. And yeah. these are the things that came out of that. So. I like that. That's amazing. <laughs> Poverty. That's, Poverty. <laughs> Let me tell you, once you are sharing, Mine, I was in college, how I started YouTube. Yeah. Also came from poverty. See? You see? It's poverty. So, I mean, it's a, it's a sad story though. But my parents, I was out abroad studying. Yeah. And my dad got sick, and he's the only person financially fit to pay my fees. Oh. And then there's the kind of illness, he couldn't sign checks or whatever. So I literally yeah. had to fend for myself in year mm. one. Oh. So I literally go, went online and Googled how to make money online. Really? That's how I discovered YouTube. Eleven I, years later. Wow! Yeah. And you've been because you have been doing your YouTube for longer than what your even your channel yeah, is, yeah, right? Yeah. So I I started YouTube, but behind the scenes. So I was doing documentaries. Right. So you would never see my face, right? So people think I just started YouTube three two years yeah. ago. No, I've been doing YouTube for eleven years, but I started putting my face out there. But mm. it all started from googling how to make money online. I Google those exact same words. <laughs> exact same words. Because yeah. I was in college, right? Mm. I can I can go work nine to five. It's not possible. Yeah, yeah. I need to be able to do something mm. like within my you know jurisdiction. I mean yeah. either it's on campus or my laptop and YouTube was the best thing yeah. um, for me. And, and you're very knowledgeable about YouTube as well because sometimes when I get stuck with my YouTube journey, I'm like, Hayford, this is happening, <laughs> what do you think? And then yeah, you give me advice. And yeah. I think a lot of people overlook you and don't realise that you've actually been in the YouTube game for longer than most people actually I have, know. you know? Thank you. I sometimes forget, you know. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I sometimes forget because sometimes you don't you look at yourself like you're a coach, but yeah. I realise people reach out to me more for advice. And I feel like it's natural because sometimes I do kind of bounce back ideas with someone else like yeah. your content creator tell me what do you think about this yeah yeah but now that you've said it, i mean i think i think hayfish is going to business coaching not really? even yeah i really do not even just because of youtube right i think because when i sit down and talk to you he's, yeah. even just today you give me so many ideas i'm like i'm even rushing to go home to write them <laughs> down because i'm like i don't want to forget anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. you're really good at business and i think you have a gift that you haven't really tapped into yeah. fully yet I'm, i think you should i'm not showing it. people you're not showing people, yeah. this guy's not showing people what he's doing. How about we get this video to a thousand likes and I'll start showing. <laughs> how many times? Let me see how many computers I've got at home. Man. <laughs> <laughs> open the tabs. I'm going to open all the tabs. Like, 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 like. Yeah. But, um, Let's get him there. Let's I need to him. open up more. I think vlogging is going to help me do that. Yeah. Where I can comfortably share my journey with people. Mm. Uh, even me building my own businesses. Yeah. Um, doing, even doing this event. You know, yeah. It's, uh, it's something that I want to give back, helping people to. Because I realized, even Kevin Sheldon said this, that if he didn't, you know, identify a content creation, mm. he would be jobless by now. See, right? And content creation is what put food on his table. And yeah. I think it's so true for me. Mm. And if I can create so many jobs out of me discovering YouTube and becoming a content creator, yeah. through building influencer first, I think I can be able to do that for so many other people. Yes. So yeah, Absolutely. check it out. I'm trying to pitch yeah. by force. <laughs> check it for where's I'm pitching. We're all pitching. Yeah. Papa Badella. You see? My book. And it's a sponsor, yeah. Okay, we'll see. Let me we'll start see. using your, your products and yeah. whatnot. But I mean, before we wrap up, right, people are watching you. Mm. Sometimes you don't look at yourself like you're an inspiration or whatever. But people do look at you like that. Right. Ten years in Ghana is something you know. I know people who came here, they came with full vim. You yeah. know, brought a little bit of money and they had to fly back. Ten years with two, three kids, oh. four kids, and still standing strong. Yeah. What do you think people coming out here should do differently in order to be able to kind of, you know, stay yeah. for longer or succeed at whatever they are doing? Because you are doing a lot. Yeah. Fafa Baidela, you wrote a book. You have two YouTube channels. This is like four things you're doing. And I'm sure yeah. there's several other things that you're doing. Yeah. That you know brings you revenue or whatnot. Mm -hmm. What would you say? I think the first thing, the biggest thing is live within your means. Mm. Don't try, because you know, it's very easy when you come here My to- My hands hurt, God really? damn. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you really need to live within your means. I think one, the mistake that I see a lot of people doing here is, mm -hmm. it's easy to be here and see things, see people with big cars, and yeah. you want to have a particular type of lifestyle, but you're not ready for it yet. That doesn't mean you can't have it, you're not ready for it yet. And so they try to do things, they want to go to restaurants, they want to have the fun, you're spending money that you don't have because trust me, money goes very, very fast here. So I think you need to get a grip of that. 
find out where your income is going to come from. You need to have more than one thing that you're doing. You need to have several things because sometimes one thing can get a bit shaky. You need other things to balance that. Look at other people, see what they're doing and see what you can do. Try and bring in money from abroad as well, like pounds, dollars. See how you can get that to support you while you're here. Cities, it's like water money, you know, use that as yeah. spending money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, earning in cities doesn't go a long way here, but no, if doesn't. you have like pounds coming in yeah you can now you like live a very comfortable life yeah exactly that's what it is so i think if you can stick to those things you can definitely um stay here for a long time mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i like that there's this question that epic it was really asked that i mm. like what attitude or what about what do you think people coming from the diaspora shouldn't bring to africa with them or bring to ghana with them mm -hmm. i don't know i might get some hate for this your sense of entitlement <laughs> sometimes i think yeah not just from the states uk as well sometimes we come here with a sense of entitlement we feel like we're owed something we feel like we're above everybody else sometimes forget all of that you're not because you know when you come here you've got a lot to learn and it will take you time to learn mm -hmm. so i think be open to learning the culture open to understanding why things are the way that they are here mm -hmm. and you know you're not going to be able to change everything I think you need to understand you can't change everything. Some things are the way that they are for a reason. That doesn't mean they're always necessarily good. There are some things that need to change, but I think being open to understand before you try to make a change. Understand why it is the way it is. So don't come with yourself self-entitlement. You're not entitled to anything. And I, you. You're like the rest of us. That, that's a very good advice. I like that. You like that? I like that. Now, I want to, I want the people watching you know, to get to know a bit more of me. Mm -hmm. What are some questions that you've been very curious about me that you want to ask? I want, I give you two questions. Okay. That you think my viewers should know about me that you won't even know about me. Mm -hmm. And I'll answer that and then we just call it a... Like, can a I day. ask anything? Yeah, you can ask anything. Really? Yeah, I'll try to answer as, as much as I can. Okay. Have you been thinking about like, your future in terms of like being married, having children and all of that. What's your take on that? Do you want to get married? My mom literally called me last week. <laughs> 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 and reminded me that, you know, I mean in Ghana, if you get to some certain stage, mm. they feel like, oh, you have everything. Yeah. What are you waiting for? Mm. So I've definitely been thinking about it, but I, I don't know. I've not had the best of luck. Mm. And I attract very mature women. Okay. Um, I find myself dating a lot of mature women. Mm. But you know African parents, you cannot take, you know, it's it's very sticky one, right? Right. But um, yeah, obviously I wouldn't get married. Mm. I'm still searching. I'm not getting like the, the perfect match. Like what's what's cool? what do you think is the problem? You like you, I mean someone who is very deep. Mm. Someone who You're can a deep really, thinker, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, it can be higgy haga all play. But What's Higi Higi so, yeah. is just like <laughs> laughing all the time. You just mm. want to be all sunshines and rainbows. Yeah. There are no moments where you really sit down to plan future trajectory. Even your dating stages. Yeah. To ask your partner, what are your ten year plan? Mm. What are you doing in your businesses? You know, where are you at your business stage? Mm. What are you? You know, the, the real stuff, right? Yeah. It's just all about sunshine and rainbow. And mm. if most of you are very young, in my own experiences. The substance is a little bit lacking. Yeah, yeah. So that has been very difficult that mm. I'm not having any luck wow. um, so far. With, but let's see. Mm. I'm single. Okay. Um, so would you take a second? If you, got, if you got married, would you take a second wife? Ooh, I'm an African, you know. So you It's would? a possibility, but I don't know. One, one wife is enough. I don't think you know the headache that comes with managing too. I know. I, I like to ask men this question because I want to see if they're being real. If they, because yeah. most men cannot handle two, no. two women. You, can't. you know, look, is it polygamy? Which one is the double? Poly polygamy. Yeah. Polygamy is not for poor people. <laughs> <laughs> but they do it in the villages, though. Yeah, they do yeah. it. I but they are rich, you know. Uh, that, because no the one. village, this guy have like five acres of farm. Right in the in the city, you need to go work, spend your time yeah. to go buy food from the shopping mall. Right, mm. these people have the food on right. the farm. Right? right, so if you're really thinking about about it, they ha he ha he has a lot of money. Mm. Right, so they That's can really because they they can build all. You can go to one village guy's property, and he has like five, ten mad houses. Yeah. That's true. Right. One for each wife. 
you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's rich. That's you know. Yeah. So it's not for poor people. I'm, I don't think I'm financially equipped enough to be managing mm. two women. For now, maybe yeah. I don't know. But for me, look, one woman is enough mm-hmm. until I, mean, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Am I still allowed one more question? Yeah. Sure. Okay. 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 So I mean that that second question it's like first question. Yeah, it's like it's part still, A and part still, yeah, B. Yeah. You know, this is like one A and one B. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. if you like were set up financially, yeah. would you remain in Ghana or you'd want to go and live abroad? Look, Ghana. I'm literally being. My friends are reaching out to me mm. that we need to set up a company in Europe for something very non-disclosure, mm. and I'm literally pulling back. Mm. Yeah. So there's one thing about Ghana. I, I see because here you can get the chance to build generational wealth. Right, right. Starting with nothing. If you mm. do have like at least ten thousand yeah. dollars, you have chances of building something like really big here. Mm. Ten thousand dollars in the UK, the US, it doesn't go anywhere. Nothing. Right? So why would I get all my money here in this nation and now want to now want to go live in Europe or US? It doesn't make any sense to me. If anything, I have to, you know, pour it, you know, into the continent. Africa is a future. Lands are cheaper now. Yeah. Like here, it never. They are not making any more lands, you know. Mm, I know that's true. Right. That's so true. if I can get as much lands, build properties here. Mm. In the next, imagine Accra being New York. In the next Make twenty years, yeah. look at the GDP. Mm-hmm. How much will land cost? Why will I live here to go? Mm. You know, live in a country where they are. Yeah, peak, right? Yeah. So, no. so if I offered you the American passport right now, and I said, I'll not take you, it. You will not take it. Ooh. I, I don't like America. I've not been there. I would visit, but everything is energy. Yeah. I don't think my energy would synchronize with America very well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So Literally, I can't be bothered. Like, I, I went to this embassy. There are requirements. I fulfilled everything. Yeah. And there was a mistake I did in my flight ticket, and they're asking me to reapply. I'm like, you know what? I don't really need this. Yeah, yeah. You know, the visa, I don't need it. Yeah. Because think about it, I might probably have a better life here in Ghana than I would go into the UK. Absolutely. You hear of doctors that are here in Ghana, they go to abroad or whatever, and then they become like cleaners or something that's, completely that's crazy. ridiculous. Yeah. Something they would never do in yeah. Ghana. They go there, they do it so comfortably. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> Because so if you really think about it, you think you are having more money. Yeah. It's because you don't spend the money in the country, you bring it to Ghana. Yeah. So it goes a long way. Yeah. But if that money you're earning there, if you should spend it within the system, yeah. you are really poor. Yeah, yeah, you have no right? money. That's you're only rich when you bring it here and you build out your house. Wow. And the locals look at you and oh, he's a guy, he's yeah. rich. But reality, you are not. That was One more question. A bonus question. A bonus question. Oh gosh, now I need to think very quickly. Um... Think on your feet. Yeah, I'm trying to think of my feet. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, too much pressure. I wish you guys would give me questions now. This is pressure. Sorry, three is pressure. Oh, 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 oh. And I really want to ask you. Oh my really? gosh. You're yeah. not curious about anything about me? I am. I am. I am. Thousand years later. Okay. I'm going to ask you something. This might be a hard one. You might not want to answer. Really? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Shoot. What do you think about the whole LGBTQ? Ah. Uh, <laughs> I thought you might not want to answer it. I don't have any opinion on it though. Opinionless. Yeah, I'm very opinionless. Mm. But yeah. Okay, okay. So, what would be your ideal business? If you could set up any business in Ghana yeah. right now, what business would you set up? Business. What business. would you love to do? If it wasn't content creation, what would you love to do? AI. AI marketing company. Mm. That's Big interesting. Job, yeah. Utilizing AI to build businesses. So I'll set up a, a business like that and get people to use like utilize AI to build their business. Okay. That's I'm, something you can do now though. Yeah, actually I'm doing it. Uh, let's see. You see what I'm saying? This guy, he hides so many things. No, it's okay. I'm partnering with a guy. He's an AI. You think I'm, I'm smart? He's, he's a genius. No, but let's, so, let's, let's be honest, right? Smart people know how to hire other people to help them. You always need someone smarter than you. You, you do. Like, even like Steve Jobs, right? Yeah. He's a smart guy, but he hires people to, who are smart to do certain things. Yeah. It's just a principle, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm going to do that because when you think about it, 
I met a guy who wrote a book using chat GPT. A whole book? A whole book. And sold the book for $100,000. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't write my book like that, but yeah, hundred thousand dollars would be nice. Really, yeah, yeah. you did. By utilizing AI. Oh, oh, yeah. That's smart. Though. That's smart. So you can't sleep on AI. No, you can't. You I can't. feel like that is like really the future right now. Um, I was watching something today, Gary V, and he said, "How many people now go to Google to Google when they want the answer to something? Everybody goes to AI. That's what you do. Yeah. You know, AI is the new Google. Yeah, that's it." Mr. Menu Finder, you to... <laughs> Mr. Menu Finder, oh yeah. We are vlogging, man. We are vlogging, eh? Yeah, these are things. I'm yes. just going to introduce you quickly to... All right then. Hello. Hello. We just met a um, few friends, so we got yeah. distracted, but... Maybe we should sit here more, so we just meet people yeah. and make more connections. That's good. I think we should How many people have we met today? Like three? Yeah, like... Really good. Yeah. This is a great place to just sit and network. So guys, if you want to see us, come here every yeah Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> every Wednesday between 11 to 2 p.m. Yeah, we'll find us. Here. We'll, we'll be here. We'll be here. Anyways, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> Go check it out on her YouTube page. Yes. Go buy her book. Yeah, yeah. Um, support us. And uh, without support further ado, we need we need support. Use you, use your uh -huh. Go ahead. But That's how, look, by <laughs> you guys supporting us, we keep making videos. We do. It's because they don't understand what it means for you guys to comment down and appreciate what we're doing. Honestly, on it, no, in all seriousness, it, it really does mean a lot. Just like seeing those comments, like to do videos is really hard. It's a lot of work and it takes a lot of energy. So when we see that someone has liked a video, commented, shared a video, it makes us feel so good, like seriously. Like, mm -hmm. let me smile like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like how you do your sign out. Oh, that, you like it? Yeah, so uh, oh, okay. You might sign out. Oh, okay, you know, for okay. So don't forget, guys, you need to. Oh, no, no, you put me on the spot uh, now. I can't let's, oh. let's do it together. Okay. Three, two, one, and go. Don't forget. To, I can't remember what I say. It's automatic. Okay, the, 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 okay the so we do it. Okay. Let's do it. 